morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for your coming. Um, that's you. Uh, now, first of all, um, today is uh, what we call the, 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 coming, the coming of winter, according to the, the Chinese calendar. You all know that, right? Do you know? Do you know what day is today? What day is it today? Now today is, is, is the coming of winter, and it's based on the, the, the lunar calendar, the Chinese calendar. What you may not know. This has got nothing to do with trading. Okay, it's just for your for your interest. It always falls on December the twenty second. Did you know that? Did you? Why 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 December the twenty second? Sorry? The sun reaches what? A high temperature. You know, today is actually the shortest day of the year. Uh, there's a term for that. Um, it's called winter solstice. And, uh, and June twenty second actually is is the other is the other, that's called summer solstice, which that's that's in the summer. And um, I don't know; it's supposed to have some some kind of special significance in some circles and in Europe or the United States, a lot of hippies come out and celebrate and they dance, dance around fires and stuff. That's in the summer. All right, now, anyway, so welcome everyone. Um, so this is the uh, first tutorial for uh, derivative trading. And I want to thank you for coming and uh, also welcome people from the NBA. I don't know if I have all your contacts. Um, that's all I think I do. Um, maybe if you need to, I don't think I know. Okay, so wonderful. Can you, when I send this around, um, can you just put your name and your email address? Um, you, you put that down at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to send it out. Now, um, so I'm responsible for helping Douglas on this course. And I've done that for maybe three times before, so I know the material very well. Um, and I know, uh, or at least I have some good ideas where are the areas where students often have problems. And um, I, would, I would say to you, well, first of all, even though I have some ideas, you are always encouraged. Ask me at any time, and some of you already have. Ask me any time when there are questions that you have. Um, please do not hesitate. Um, some tutorials are, well, tutorials are always helpful. That's what they're supposed to be. But this one for trading, I think it's actually quite necessary. It's going to be really beneficial for you to come to these sessions. I know it, and I know that the, the lecturer goes quite fast. Classroom is big, pretty small. All of those things uh, would mean that if you come here, and it is your choice, uh, you are likely to find your learning much more effective. Okay, I can guarantee you that. Now, um, let me just run through a uh, few things with you. Um, so I may not have. But uh, it's time to cover all of the things that I would like to say today. In which case, I will I will defer to the next 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 session. The first thing I want to say to you is that um, so this is the uh, this is the the, uh, the breakdown of uh, the assessment. There is just one individual assignment, and I will tell you a bit about that in a moment. Uh, there is a group assignment. Which is also 15% uh, tutorial. You just need to come and say something, ask some questions, and you get all the points. 
Um, now, what you um, the next lecture is actually tonight, but the next tutorial is not happening on December twenty fourth. Uh, it is going to be, and there will just be one. Okay, so, because the the class size has now is smaller than we plan for, so there will just be one tutorial, uh, which is on a Saturday evening. So you don't need to come tomorrow, um, and it is just for next Saturday, okay? Uh, we have around 30 students, so not that would that would all, that would fit in one one class quite quite comfortably. So we're going to do that, and this is in um, uh, CYT uh, LT5, I believe. Yeah, starting at 6.30 p.m. Is everyone okay with that? Okay. And the final exam uh, is, well, it's, it's subject to our confirmation, but it, it's likely to be on Saturday, March the 3rd, or possibly Friday, March the 2nd. So we'll, we'll let you know one, one or the other. Okay. So this is the calendar. Um, so there won't be a, a tutorial on the 24th, as I said. Okay. Actually, you don't have to worry about this page. So the next time we meet here will be the Saturday after Christmas. Okay. And I will, I will send around an invitation to all of you anyway. Okay. Um, everyone is okay on, on, on that? Yeah. Okay, so we can have everyone together, which I think is better. And this is the timetable. Okay, now I think apart from I need to wipe this out. So this isn't happening, and um, we don't. We will not meet on Friday anymore. So this is the first and the last time we will do this here. Otherwise, these are largely correct. Okay, so I'll wipe this out. All right. Yes. Why would you want to do that? It depends. Um, the, I mean, it's okay. I would. Yeah, that's actually easier for me. Um, then I also get the Saturday evening free. Although I do have another tutorial. The the reason we don't do that is um, because we have part time students. Yeah. If, if if there are no part time students, then then yes, that then then I don't I don't mind at all. That's usually the, uh, and I think we do have some part-time students. Okay. Um, now, um, let me. So today I want to tell you a, a bit about some trading fundamentals, um, and also I want to talk a little bit about assignment number one. Okay. So just to, just to get you thinking. Um, and you're going to find that quite interesting, I think. Okay. Now, in terms of just trading fundamentals, uh, let me allow me to say a few things. Um, now, I've summarized here. This is a something that students quite often have questions um, on the different types of orders when they are it doesn't matter what you're buying whether it's stocks or bonds uh, FX, uh, 
commodities, whatever, um, these still do apply. Now, to be honest with you, um, if you are an institutional trader and you have hundreds of billions of dollars to throw around, I think the ones on top are probably more relevant to you if you are a big fund manager. Okay. Now, if you are a little guy, if you are just a retail investor, I think these, or even if you are an ordinary just a trader, you know, for a couple of minutes, I think these ones actually are more relevant. And these are the ones that I have used before, okay? um, personally, as a trader. I would, do you want me to explain all these things now? You will use them, I guarantee you. One day, if you, either if you are a trader or a personal investor or a fund manager, you know what you know what limit orders are. Stop order. Stop. Yes. No. Maybe. Tell me. Do you know what these are? Some of them. Okay. How about today? Do you know what these things are? Some of them, okay, right. okay. Now, let me, uh, now, first of all, um, the ones on the top, I, I call them sort of executional techniques. So these are different ways to try to get a trade done. And they uh, quite often don't have to do with uh, setting different price levels, which is what end up doing with, with the different order types. Now, immediate or cancel or fill or kill, actually somebody was asking me what that means. Um, you know, the, the best thing for me to do is um, just bear with me a second. I'm going to try and split the screens. I'm going to show the lecture on one screen and then my, my slides on the other. Okay. And uh, uh, flash orders, uh, I think, is of, you know, there's some There's some interest on that. It's actually um, a rather contentious issue. And I have, <clears throat> now, you don't have to read this now, but I've actually um, uh, found some notes regarding what flash orders actually are. Um, I don't think it would be part of the exam. It doesn't mean you don't need to know. I mean, it, it's really for your own intellectual curiosity. If you want to go into, um, what's it called? High frequency trading, let's say, right? Okay? Um, you might want to just check this out and feel free to come to me and discuss this. Okay? But for now, for today, I don't think I will I will go over it. Okay, flash order is a kind of uh, market practice in the United States um, where you are allowed to um, really flash up a customer's order for less than half a second or 500 milliseconds, which is half. So one second has 1,000 milliseconds. You are now to flash up your order for half a second. You might think, wow, that is so short. Well, actually, in the trading world, that is already a long time. Okay. Um, I don't think I would do this as a priority. We might come back to it if we have time, but I include it here because if you are truly interested in trading in the market microstructure, uh, this is a pretty fascinating topic. Um, there is some debate about whether this process is legal or not. Um, it is sometimes compared to front running. You know front running? Anyone have an idea? You know what that means? Over the front line. I just broker and I get a large. I sell order of stuff. And I can just stop in my personal account or some other accounts. 
Show that order within New York. Okay. Now, of course, that's not good for these guys in Chicago and Philadelphia because, well, if you, if you keep doing that, then I'm not going to get into business. Okay. So that's why we only allow to show for half a second. But that time is already enough. Uh, and so what, what can happen is when you show that order, okay, then, you know, big big brokers like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley get involved. They will see that and they can capture it. And they pay money for that. 
Now that, that's just the flash mode in, in two minutes. And it's a lot more complicated than that. And you are fascinated by this topic. If you have a vision to be a, a high frequency trader, um, we have a Luna who are in that field, by the way. If you want to know who it is, I'm going to tell you this. Okay. If you want to do that, okay, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. Okay. Um, now, I want to uh, actually spend a little time uh, telling you about these, because I think these, might, these will be useful. Okay. If you plan to be a, uh, an investor, in fact, what I'm about to tell you will be useful for the rest of your life. How about that? Uh, now, market orders really are exactly that. Um, I don't know if I can show you something. Um, so the market is now trading. Um, Where is a good place to look? How about Yahoo Finance? And I'm gonna I'm gonna try and pick maybe something that really does trade like HSBC. Now so here is the stock price for HSBC. Now it it is live because today is a business day and this is the Hong Kong market which is open. It's currently trading at 79.85, and I hope it. Well, it's not the most incredibly, it's not the most volatile stock around town. I know that, but it could. Now, when you see something like this, okay, and if you put in a market order, that means whatever the market is trading, you will get that price. Now, there is normally a bid offer. So the one that they show you typically is what we call mid-market. So it's taking the average between the bid and the offer. So it could be 79.80 bid, 79.90 offer, for instance. Okay. Um, a market order means you want to buy something and whatever is the price out there in the market, you will trade at that price. Now, if you remember, uh, Govert was saying that they they never actually use market orders in their trading practice. And the reason for that is that market orders, when you look at a market like this, and it's well behaved, and it looks like it's in the refrigerator, it's not doing anything. I mean, that's fine. So your market order price, your execution price, will be something like what you see up there, okay? But in a really, really fast market, if you do a market order, it is almost like closing your eyes and saying, okay, I want to buy this, whatever the price. And you may not know what price you're going to end up trading at. So in other words, you have no control, okay? So that is why they don't do it. Although, when the markets are very slow and stable, you don't really feel that. Okay? Now that's that's market order. Uh, now limit order is something like this. Okay, so if you so let's say um, I was using Google as an example, but I can switch over to HSBC. So now it's the, the, this trading at 79.85. Okay? It's really not moving. When I want it to move, it doesn't move. Uh, but maybe later it will. Uh, 79.85 is the price right now for HSBC. Now a limit order is you want to buy the stock, but you don't want to pay this price right now. You want to buy cheaper, 
okay so you can say you want to buy at uh, let's say 79 uh you can even so that's a limit that's a limit buy order now of course maybe you already have some stocks you can have a limit sell order you want to sell it higher sell order so you can sell it at let's say 81 whatever you want okay it's your freedom to put whatever price you want so a limit limit order means you always want to you try to buy low you try to strike a better bargain so you try to buy lower and you try to sell higher so that means when you put that in at that moment probably nothing will happen okay because the price is now 79.85 you want to buy a 79 no one wants to no one is prepared to do that uh still hasn't moved let me refresh it okay so that's a limit order so you want to buy cheaper or you want to sell more expensive is everyone okay with that oops this is a one year i don't want a one year What, what happened there? Well, this is the uh, this is the intra intraday. Yeah, this okay. This one should move around um, a little later on. So it's actually it's ticking like in a unit of like five cents, seventy nine, eighty, eighty five, and, and so on. Okay, so it's it's fairly boring right now. Um, so that's a market order now. A, a limit order sorry a limit order is just as i described so you want to buy you want to buy cheaper so buy lower or sell higher so basically you just put in the order and you wait okay and you hope that it would actually turn around if you want to buy or you hope it will swing up if you're going to sell okay everyone is okay with that yeah now a stop order uh is something a little bit different now i already told you that a limit order is when you want to buy lower or sell higher A stop order is the exact opposite. Okay. So limit order is when you want to buy lower and you want to sell higher. Now a stop order is actually when you want to buy higher and you want to sell lower. Now you might wonder why, why would I actually do that? So the price right now is still 79.85. If you're going to put in a limit order, sorry, a stop order, okay? So if the spot price right now is 79.85, if you were to put in a stop order, it would be something like buying at 81 or selling at 79 so it's the exact opposite why would you do that hmm. so. yeah yeah Very good. Yeah. What was your? Were you, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Are you a regular investor or trader or? You are an FX trader. Oh, where? 
whereabouts. Ah, right, interesting. Um, I think you can come here and teach this stuff. Um, huh? Yeah, okay. But for the benefit of everyone, uh, I just want to try to get everyone in, on the same page. Now, um, so Axel is correct to say that the stop order, okay, is basically when you already, uh, typically it is when you have a precision already and you are trying to manage the risks of that precision. So let's say you already have some stocks and the market is in free fall. So right here, right now it's here, okay? And what did we say the price was? 79.85. So you have some stocks and you are worried that it's gonna fall further, but you don't wanna sell right now in case that it actually swings back up. So what you can do is, is, all right, I'm gonna hold on for a little bit longer, but if let's say it drops below 75, and it doesn't have to be 75, it can be anything, okay? If it really drops below, I expect there's gonna be a real disaster, and I want to sell. And because you, are set, you want to put in an order to sell at a price which is less than the, uh, the, uh, the market price right now. Okay, so this is what's called a stop order. So a stop order basically means, so a stop order is uh, when your, when the stop level is traded, okay, then you, you have you have a market order. Okay, now what I mean by that, what I mean by that is this. Let me try and magnify, okay. So let, let's say, again, you use this, this is time, this is the price. So here's HSBC and currently 79.85, all right. So you don't, and you say, you put in a, a stop order stop order to sell, uh, let's say 10,000, doesn't matter, 10,000 shares at 75. Now what that means is, so let's say it keeps going down and then it hits 75. Okay. You are gonna trade actually at the next, the next market price the next market price. So in other words, as soon as your stop level is touched, then you have a market order, which is to say you will be selling and you have no control over what price you'll be selling at, okay? Now, if you look at this, still hasn't done anything, uh, or maybe I need to refresh it. No, it really is that boring. Um, so you see here that the, the, the prices are ticking by, you know, five cents, and it's very orderly, but markets don't have to move like that, okay? So when there is a lot of volatility, it can actually uh, jump, or it can gap up or gap down, by you know, 20 cents, 50 cents, even a dollar. Which is to say, when it hits 75, there is no guarantee that the next price can be 74.95, okay? The next price can be 72, who knows, okay? It really depends why the market is getting driven down. This is called, gap, this is called uh, a gapping, gapping market. So it, it is just, this is why sometimes you see in, in price charts, you know, it just goes in free fall suddenly, vertical, okay. Are you with me there? Now that's, just, that's the, the stop order, and that is the problem with the stop order. 
in the sense that it basically turns into a market order the moment your stop level is touched. Right? Now, stop orders are, are good for, for, like I said, for, for risk management. Um, if, you, if you are long some stocks and you worry that it, 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 it can fall rapidly, uh, it could even be the other way around. You know, if you, if you want to buy some stocks and the price right now is seventy nine eighty five. Okay. Now HSBC is a good example because if you were to take, let's say, the three months, so you can see that it's already had a pretty, uh, excuse me, serious run up in price. So it's it's hitting the eighty dollar resistance and not quite getting through. So maybe what you are thinking, and I know this is probably what. You know, many investors will be thinking, they're thinking, wow, okay, I, I want to buy HSBC, but I just think right now it's too expensive. Okay? And I expect that maybe the price will come back down to, you know, a more acceptable level. But if it keeps going up, I don't want to miss the bus. That is the mentality, okay? So I think the price would, would go down, and when it goes down, I am happy to buy at a lower price. Of course you are, you always, you're always happier to buy at a lower price. But if it keeps going up, I don't want to miss my chance. So I'm gonna set a stop buy order now this is not stop sell, this is stop buy, okay? At let's say 82. So now I can sleep better, okay? I know that uh, if it goes down, then I can buy at a lower price, but if it suddenly goes the other way, okay, I don't have to keep my eyes on the screen all day, every day. I know that if it really trades through 82, and my rationale would be, well, it's just going to keep getting higher, and at least I catch it here. Okay? Is everyone okay with that? Yeah. Now, I don't want to just explain to you, oh, here you go, there's a stop order. I want to explain to you the psychology behind it, how you, how you can apply that. If I just tell you, oh, a stop order is when you put in a stop level, and when it hits that level, it becomes a market order. You say, oh, okay, yeah, thank you very much, okay? But how do you use it? So that, that's what I, um, uh, that's what I'm trying to tell you here, okay? Everyone is okay? Uh, now, the other one is, um, um, what we call stop limit order. Okay, now stop limit order actually is, is a, you can probably tell, is a combination of these two. All right, and the, the way it works is, now you remember I just told you a few minutes ago that if you have a stop order, let's say, let's go back to the stop sell, okay? Stop sell order. So I told you that, let's say HSBC was trading at 79.85 and you have some stocks and you want to get out if it hits 75. Now the problem is, when your stop level is traded, like I said, you you actually have a market order and you don't know what might be the next market price. Hopefully it is 74.95, but it could be 72 or even 65, who knows, okay? It can be anywhere. So you might be a bit nervous well, I want to manage my risk, but if I put in a stop order and 
you trace through that, then I'm, I'm really just flying blind. I don't know at what level I will be selling my stock. Now, if that is your concern, okay, this is when the, um, the stop, the limit stop order or stop limit order is relevant. Now, a stop limit order, actually there are two numbers. Okay, so let's say the spot price is 79. 85 that is the price right now so you have a stop level and let's just say 75 you also have another number called a limit and let's say that was 74 50 now what does that mean so now you have two inputs what this means is if this is HSBC, so now it's 79.85, as I said, and I bet you it still hasn't moved. Okay. And then you set a stop at 75. Fine. So that means if it trades through 75, you are going to sell. But if it trades through 75, you don't want to sell lower than your limit, okay? So if it trades through 75 and the next price was 74.80, well, that's not good because it's dropped another 20 cents, but you will still trade, okay? But in another scenario where it's 79.85 now, and then it, it hits 75, and then it went straight to 72. Here, you won't trade. You won't trade because you set a limit. You said, I want to, I want to sell when the market trades through 75, but you know, I, want to, I don't want to sell cheaper than 74.50. Is everyone okay with that? Now, it works the other way as well, okay? So this is a stop, uh, this is a stop limit sell. This one is a stop or limit stop sell, okay? You actually can have a stop limit buy as well. So this, this works in the other direction. So 79.85 and you have a you have a stop to buy, let's say at 81, and you have a limit. Now it's now it's higher, the limit at 82. And uh, this is your stop. So sometimes you might do that. Let's say there is a, some kind of company announcement and you don't know what to expect, but it can be good news. It can be good news. And if it's good news and the price goes up, you don't want to miss the boat, but hey, you have your limits, okay? You're not gonna, you're not, you're not gonna keep paying uh, up to the ceiling. Now, of course, you can you can set that anywhere you want. You can set this at 83 or 8120. So it's really up to you what you do. Okay? But at least now the control is back with you. Okay? Everyone is okay with that? Yeah? Um now let me um, let me. So I we've already talked about uh, IOC and FOK um, intermarket sweeps, flash orders. They are not so important. But then again, I said that is a really uh, is a very interesting topic. Um, and packed orders. Well, we talked about that too. Okay. 
some information on the flash order that you can read if you want to. Now, I want to actually um, jump to assignment number one for now. And I want to tell you this a little bit earlier so that you can start thinking about it. Now, this is going to be an individual assignment. I think the due date um, is likely to be somewhere on the uh, in the second half of January. I haven't confirmed yet with Govern, but it will be some somewhere around there. Okay? Uh, maybe 20, January 20 or something, but it's in the end, we, we need to decide. Now, what this assignment is, yeah, so due date is sometime in, in January. Um, is we are asking you to make a structured product. Now, what is a structured product? Um, so first of all, there is a spec, but it's not finished yet. Okay, so I'm still still drafting it. But I can show you. this is not this is this is not the finished one. Okay. Um, so, well, I'll let you read that briefly. Okay. I'll let you read that briefly. I'll give you two minutes, and then I'll show you a very simple example of a structured product. And then I'll show you how you can put that together. And in the coming weeks, uh, we will spend a little bit more time discussing that. Okay. So just, just spend a couple of minutes reading that. to come up with a proposal on a structured product. Now, uh, let me show you the simplest example of how these things are done. Okay. So here is one example, and it can't get simpler than that. Um, Let me just uh, wipe that off. Now, this is a simple example of a what we call a structured note. Um, it is so you know that when you are, if you're an investor, well, you can invest in bonds, in stocks, in FX, in commodities, precious metals. Uh, you can also invest in these things. And this is the market that I've been in for the last 15 years. And if you're on a structured products desk, then all day, basically, you're pricing these things until your head is just spinning around. Okay. Uh, now, let me explain what's going on here. Uh, so you have <clears throat> a $10 million investment, and this is a two-year transaction, okay? And it doesn't actually pay any coupons, so that's the that's the downside. You don't you don't get any interest income. But at redemption, there is a formula here, and which is you know actually quite elegant. Now, what this is saying is. Redemption means at maturity, what do you get? Well, you're going to get 100% multiplied by something. 
What is that something? Well, first of all, there's a one in here. So if you multiply it out, you know that you're going to get 100% plus 100% times something. Now, the, the, the important thing is what is that something, which is this, this one here. All right. You all know the max function, don't you? It's just the algebraic representation that when there are multiple values inside, you take the highest one. Okay. So if this perf times PR is less than zero, you just get zero. Okay. But if it is positive, you will get that. Uh, this is also how you would write the uh, summarize the payoff of you know options. So we'll be doing that uh, quite frequently this for this course. Now, now perf is the performance of the underlying index. What is the index? What is the S&P 500? Okay. And there is actually a participation rate as well, which is 60%. For example, so the S&P 500 right now is 2,684. That's on your, your right-hand side, okay? So let's say you do this trade today. So 2,684 is the starting value. Now let's say two years later, the S&P goes up exactly 10%. So 268 points, okay? So what you are gonna get will be 10% multiplied by 60%, which is 6%. Are you with me there? Yeah? So you don't get the full benefit. Now this is called a participation rate, and you see in a moment why we, we are doing that, okay? Now is everyone okay with this? Very, very simple, this is, this may be the first structured product we've ever seen in your life, or maybe it's not. Um, it's a very, very simple one. And all that is happening here, you can probably figure out, uh, well, when you look at something like this, you need, you need to think about the, the, um, the mechanics of the payoff. The mechanics are as follows. If the S&P 500 goes up, you benefit from that. If it goes down, do you have any losses? No, you don't. What is that a representation of? It's the classic call option payoff, isn't it? Okay. And that is precisely what's behind a trade like that, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. There is a call option. Now, how do you price something like this? Well, again, it isn't difficult. Okay. Uh, can you still read that with my scribblings? I'll let you read that for, for just a minute, okay? And then I'll, I'll, I'll give you the commentary, okay? Now, maybe a bit hard for you to read. Just wipe that off. I'll wipe this off at least, okay? If you work in a big bank, um, JP Morgan, BNP, Deutsche Bank, uh, Barclays, or even some of the um, regional banks, Chinese banks, Asian banks, um, you would be doing this a lot for your investor clients. So the issuer would be someone like I don't know, DBS or, or BNP, JP Morgan, okay? So what you do is, so there is an investor, and on day one, they're gonna give $100 to the issuer. The 
Imagine it's PMT alpha, the French. And then what they do is the issuer will turn around and there is another refinement on the floor. Uh, it's sometimes called the, the multi-market desk or the funding desk. The name is very important. So they will give that money uh, to this desk. This desk doesn't pay them any interest for the next two years. Okay? And you notice that they received a hundred dollars, but they're not giving the entire amount to the funding bank. Right? The way this works is two years later, this desk is going to give back to them the power value. You're going to give them that a hundred dollars. So it is almost like a zero coupon bond. So that four dollars twenty. Hundred minus ninety five eighty. That four dollars twenty is kind of the the, uh, the interest rate of the zero two point five now because this is over two years. So if you take the compounding into account, it is approximately approximately two percent per annum. Okay? It doesn't matter as much as that. So you do that and. Uh, you got somebody left, don't you? Come up here and left. Four point two. Four point two. Four point two. What are you going to do with that money? Well, you're going to go to the derivative desk. You're going to buy that option with the money that you have. So now you're all set. So if you are the issuer facing the investor, you got two things in mind. Number one, two years later, this guy is going to pay you back hundred dollars, which you will give back to the investor. In addition, if there is any payoff from the derivative tax, that also goes to them. Okay, so it's, it's all covered. And now, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the simplest way to break down the structure. Where you take the client's money, you split that up into a basic a kind of a funding component, if you like, okay, and a derivative component. Um, I should say that here you are uh, putting a bit of the money away and then you're buying an option. You don't always have to buy. You can sell options as well. You don't need to buy them. You can know, you go long and you can go short. Because if you sell options, then you will incur some other potential claims uh, that people made against you. All right? Now, there is one more element that I have not mentioned, and that is very good. Yeah? How do you, where does that sixty percent come from? Uh, it comes from this. So let's say you uh, uh, you want to buy a call option, and the principal was hundred dollars, and this desk tells you, well, for that you got to pay seven dollars, seven percent. Okay, so this option. It's going to cost you seven dollars, and you tell the desk, well, "I don't have seven dollars. Okay, I only got four dollars twenty." And then they will say, "Well, in that case, you can buy sixty percent of this option." In other words, uh, your your payoff is only applicable to part of the principal. You, you are not buying an option for the full size. You buy as much as you can, and this is where the participation rate came from because four dollars twenty is sixty percent of seven. Are you with me there? Yeah. Absolutely. 
that's a very good now since he made that point let me now introduce you to a good friend that you're going to see almost every time from now on it's a website called optionprice.com what do you think it does <laughs> it prizes options okay uh, it's a very very simple it's primitive but it it does its job so just now he, he brings up a point um, when, when people you know where I work is uh, when we make some comments in class I give out these little coupons in case I don't know your name even if I do it's easier to monitor after a while I might not do it if I, if I get to know everyone but you just write down your name and at the end, you give me back the little sticker and I'll, I'll give you some points for that. All right. Um, hmm? Sorry? For $100, you, you write your name. <laughs> Is she going to offer lower or what? She's going to bargain with you? Um, these things are not tradable. Okay. Now, uh, he made the point, and because he made that point, I thought I would just introduce this to you right now. Um, uh, the idea that, now here, you, you're going to see this website, uh, you know, quite often. Um, so there's an underlying price, which is the spot price. There's an exercise price, the strike price. So these things come under different names. Underlying price is spot price. Exercise price is the strike price okay days until expiration i believe this is calendar days so 30 days is one month okay interest rate don't worry about that dividend yield don't worry about that for now now this volatility at 25 we're going to be talking a lot about this in this course almost every week probably okay because this course really is about managing all those funny looking terms on the right hand side these are may i introduce you to distinguished members of the greek family okay delta gamma vega theta rho okay you're going to see a lot of them uh in the coming weeks now right now these are the values by default and if you hit calculate well i don't need to hit calculate because the prices are already there so three dollars and two cents for a call 269 for a put if you change your volatility so before it was priced at 25 so let's say now i change it to 28 what would happen to the price when I calculate? Is it going to go up, go down, unchanged? There are, these are the only three possibilities, okay? Well, it can blow up as well, but I don't think it would do that. So calculate. So the price has increased. Can you see that? Yeah? And you can keep pumping it up to 35 and the price keeps going up um sorry the unit uh is in percentage uh it's annualized percentage so that means so thank you for the question um so that means the volatility, uh, by, by the way, we talk a lot more about, about option vol in the coming weeks, but to, to give you a short answer, this is quoted as uh, annualized percent, okay? What does this actually mean now, to make that very brief, okay? So that means and this is where you, you need a little bit of statistics. So the price right now is 100, okay, since you asked this question. 
So that means, and this is a, don't forget, this is a 30 day option. This is a one month option, okay? So if it's trading at a, a vol of 25, there is actually a meaning behind this. So that means for the next 30 days, between now and January 22nd, wow, we're talking 2018. Okay, so for the next 30 days, we don't really know how the market is going to move. We, we have no idea whether it will be up or down, but the option market has a view as to what is the likely probability distribution it's trying to guess on that, okay? Now, it could be like this. It could be a lot more volatile, okay? And this 25% represents the market estimation, estimation on one sigma, one standard deviation. Okay, so let's say it's here. So it has a, what is it, 66% chance of falling between plus or minus 25%. Now that is annualized, by the way. So this is the annualized volatility at 25. If I need to turn that into monthly, What is that equal to? Or if I want to turn it into daily, what is that equal to? I'll give you a hint. You don't divide 25 by 12. Okay. One twelve. You mean you divide by 12? The V sign. So what? <laughs> what? What would it, What would be the value? I'm trying to figure out what you what you're trying to tell me. Um, so 25 divided by something. So what? What would what, what what would be the value? So one plus twenty five plus something you said. That's one twenty. That's one hundred and twenty five percent. No, now. Sorry, Axel wanted to say something. Yeah. Very good. Okay, now, one year has twelve months. Has fifty two weeks approximately, has, uh, okay, and here is when it gets tricky, 256 trading days, all right, trading days, and what you do, if you want to turn it into a monthly, you just put the 12 there. I'll put the weekly here, just for, So weekly will be, and, and actually people, normally they don't ask for weekly. Okay? So that would be square root of 52. And for daily, so you can see this number is actually smaller, but it's not linear. And the daily actually has, I guess, special significance because the square root of 256, I believe, is actually 16. So you see that teachers like Govard, they like to use a vol of 32 or 24 or 16 quite often because that divides quite neatly by the, sorry, divide by, not 16, 16. It divides quite neatly by the square root of 256, okay? Um, where was I? 
Oh yeah, we're talking about this. One uh, quite popular interview question uh, is, and I'm not going to answer that today. Okay, what is the price of an option? Any option? Um, no, that's not the question. Okay. What is the price of a? What is the price of an option when the volatility is infinity? Okay. It has been asked before. Um, I know it's been asked. And whatever you say in an interview. What is the price of an option when volatility is infinite? Well, actually, it's very simple. You, all you need to do is get a, get a screen up like that, and then you, you type in 10,000 and see how it reacts. Huh? Is it going to blow up? Yeah. Uh, it's close to 100 for the call, and it's a discounted value of 100 for the put. If you put interest rate at zero, okay, so it's a bit of a distraction, these interest rates and dividends. I think you'll get 100. Okay. Now, the key point is just, the key point is not just knowing the price, because if I was the interviewer, I would be, my next question would be why. So you need to understand where these boundary conditions come from and why they are they are the way they are. Um, anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so here's uh, the structured product. And because I have already shown you such a simple one, um, I guess the bad news is you probably can't do this one. Or if you do, you're gonna get quite low marks. Um, but I have some notes here on how this thing is put together. Now, if you uh, just randomly Google on option payoff structures, you're going to find a lot of information out there on this is when you are long a straddle, when you are short a straddle. This is when you are long a, what we call a strangle. This is when you are short the strangle. Uh, this one is a correct, sorry? So, so what, what is it called? Bootstrap. A star, yeah, a spread. Yeah, this is a spread. Uh, it's sometimes called a collar. Collar. Okay. Do you know there is a name for this? Don't worry too much about the name since there's like 15 different names for the same thing, but it's whether you understand, you know, uh, what's, what's behind them. This is sometimes called a risk reversal. Okay. Now, these are just the basic ones. Uh, for you to tackle this assignment, okay, I strongly recommend, the e you want to make your life easy, you, you do, don't you? You all do, okay? The way to make your life easy is you go up to the fourth floor, hmm, the trading lab, log on to Bloomberg, check out some stocks or currencies or whatever asset class you want to work with, okay? And so let's say you are, you look at the, you know, the stocks of Google. It doesn't have to be, okay? And when you type OV, so Google, then the, the, uh, the asset class is equity, and then OV, and you hit enter, there is a menu with all the, um, Vanilla and exotic options under the sky you can think of. A lot of them that you can play around with. And I think what we need you to do in the end is just to price some of these and then 
put them into the structure, how? The way that I've described here, okay? And then you come up with some kind of investment proposal. If you join a structured products desk, ladies and gentlemen, this is what you're going to be doing in the first, in the, within the first month, okay? You'll be coming up with these trade ideas and talking to your clients. So if you can demonstrate here, you can do that. In fact, then you are, you are one step ahead of people who haven't done this. Okay? Is everyone all right with that? Yeah? Now, we're going to, uh, I will, we will talk some more about assignment one here and there, because I, I do realize for students who haven't done this before, it might be a bit out there, okay? And, um, so I'll try to give you a bit of help, okay? The, um, to, uh, this morning session, um, also it has been recorded, and I'll see if I can produce a video, an audio visual version, and I'll, I'll try and put it either on, on YouTube or in Blackboard. Okay? Is everyone all right? Um, so the last thing is we will meet again. When? Saturday, December 30. Let me just double check, okay? Um, I'm pretty sure that is right. This is my schedule. Yeah, so we, we won't be doing the Friday anymore. So the okay. 29th of December. No, nothing happens here. Um, Hang on a second. Now, yeah, it's good that you guys are here. Normally, there is a tutorial uh, on Saturday evening, right? Because this is now, this is the time we will be meeting regularly. But tomorrow night being the last Saturday before Christmas, I think we all need a break. I do too. So we're going to meet next Saturday, next Saturday evening. We might need to do that also on a Friday morning. Let me come back to you on, um, let me get back to you on Friday 29th, okay? I will, I will confirm with you by email, okay? I'll confirm with you on that. Okay. So thanks everyone. Um, I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, you can give me back those yellow stickers if you like. Um, put your own names on it. So watch out for your emails, I'll be in touch from time to time.